All right, folks, I'm about to go made in the Canis M4, and I want to show you two things that I always do before I take a new copter for its first flight. And I think you should do them too. These are not optional, these are absolutely mandatory. Uh, the first one, well actually, this is a freebie. This is not one of those two things. Every time I plug the copter in for the first time, after doing major work on the copter, I use a smoke stopper bulb. This is in case I've accidentally shorted something, or if I have something wired the way it shouldn't be wired, this will save me from burning something out and damaging something. So when I plug this in, if any current is flowing, the bulb will light up. And that is an indicator that, well, number one, significant current is flowing, more than about an amp, the bulb will light up. That shouldn't be happening when I'm not flying the copter. So if that is happening, then something, I've got a short or something isn't right, the bulb is saving me from the magic smoke coming out. So I always do that. Let's plug in. Okay, the bulb is not lighting up. That means I do not have a short. Good. That's good. Good to know. And I always do, this is actually all gear I moved over from the QQ190 after I damaged an ESCN motor on the QQ190. So in theory, it's all sound, but any major work, always use the smoke stopper on the first plug-in. Now I know I'm getting okay. So here are the two things you must do before you made in your copter. The first is I'm going to arm the copter. The motors are going to spin, and I'm going to disarm, and I'm going to confirm that they turn off. Motor spinning, disarm, they turned off. Good, okay, great. Now I don't care how you disarm, I don't care if you use a switch or a stick or whatever, you need to be able to disarm and you need to know that the copter is going to reliably disarm. If you've somehow made a screwy mistake and it does not working, the time to find that out is now with your props off on the bench, not when you're flying into your neighbor's garden shed or something like that. The other thing you must do is arm, and turn your transmitter off and your fail safe should work okay so in my case I've got fail safe set up to drop the copter and I think that's how acro and racing copters should be set up I don't think that hokey sort of semi auto landing that clean flight supports I don't think it's very useful I don't think you should try auto landing or, or anything like that unless you actually have like GPS based return to home but I'm not gonna take that argument uh, today However, you've got your fail-safe set up, test it on the bench and confirm that it works. And that way, when you first go out to fly and you take your first careful little maidens, you know, you're just, you hover the copter and see if anything is really off base. If anything does go wrong, you'll be able to shut it down before it flies into a puppy's face and kills a baby. Okay, two things you must do. Seriously, I'm not kidding. Do those two things before you fly the copter. Any new, any new build is the min minimum of what you need to do before you go fly. Happy flying.